All right, my children, this is Prime again, and I will read more slowly this time. See, I'm going to. This one is called Beware the Fangirls, and it is by Thundercracker, which we love. Okay. One moment there was calm, a silver-gray sky, muting light and color just slightly, and giving everything a somewhat softer cast. The freshly tilled field below was still soft from the earlier rain showers, and the air smelled of fresh, damp dirt. A lone car cruised leisurely down the road that bordered one side of the field, a spattering of spray kicking up from its back tires. Somewhere a pheasant crowed hoarsely, staking out its territory. But apart from that sound and the rapidly vanishing vehicle, there was little activity. It was a tranquil spring day, one that didn't promise wind or a thunderstorm or any other excitement. The next moment, the sky was cleaved open with a terrible metallic sound like a blade striking metal and a violet flash made the clouds glow with an eerie cast. From the rent in time and space fell two twisting, writhing forms, one gleaming blue and silver, the other black and violet, both winged and strangely metallic. Just as quickly as it flared to life, the light faded and the rip sealed itself. But the two castaways remained to hurtle to the ground and slam into the plowed up field. Clods of dirt sprayed everywhere at the impact. Then all went as perfectly still as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. It was some time later before Thundercracker unlined with a groan and lifted his head out of the dirt, squinting at his surroundings. At first he wasn't unduly alarmed. Coming online flat on the ground and in some amount of pain was a fairly regular occurrence for him. Another day, after all, meant another battle and another opportunity for the Autobots to hand him his own aft in the scuffle. Why should this one be any different? Warp, he ventured, hefting himself to his hands and knees. Wherever you are, you'd better be all right, because I'm going to kill you myself. He looked to his immediate right and groaned. Skywarp lay face down and spread eagled on the ground close by, face still buried in the mud, and smoke and fluids still trickling from a gaping rent in his back. He was still offline too, and from the look of it, it would be he would be offline for a good long while yet. Frag it just my luck, Thundercracker muttered, shoving himself to his feet. Just his luck that Skywarp would get whacked with a missile at the exact moment he was attempting to teleport. Just his luck that the impact would send Skywarp flying right into Thundercracker. Just his luck that in crashing into him, Skywarp had managed to warp both of them and not just himself to wherever they were now. Thundercracker to Decepticons, come in. Repeat, Thundercracker to Decepticons, come in. His radio hails were met with complete static. Great. Just slagging great. Somewhere in the distance, a dog began raising a racket, no doubt picking up the two seekers' scent and reacting to the intrusion on his territory. Knowing it would only be a matter of time before the animal's owners investigated, Thundercracker bent down and hefted Skywarp, slinging his fallen wingmate over his shoulders and carrying him away from the building. It was fairly slow going as his feet kept sinking into the moist ground below, but it didn't seem wise to attract additional attention by flying away. When he reached the road, he found himself staring at it a while, puzzled. This was by far the largest human road he had ever come across. In fact, it almost looked as big as the roads back on Cybertron. Then another car crested a slight rise off to his left, and it took only a second for him to compare the size of the vehicle with his own size and come to the startling conclusion. Primus, we've shrunk! The car shot past without even pausing, though the driver did take the time to sound the vehicle's horn at him. He shook his fist at the vehicle before continuing onward, following the road for lack of any other alternatives. He couldn't worry about his sudden change in size for now. First priority was to find some place to conceal himself and his wingmate. His increasingly heavy wingmate, Fraggit. Fortune finally smiled upon him when, after half an hour of hoofing it and being honked at and yelled at by passing humans, he came upon a farmhouse that looked to be currently abandoned. With an array of car parts and other assorted junk cluttering the front yard and what looked like an abandoned barn not far behind. The barn was so old that he was sure a single touch from a full-sized transformer would send it collapsing in a heap of splinters, but for now, it was their best chance at sanctuary. The humans who owned the property could return to the house at any moment, but he doubted they'd bother to check the decaying barn. Nudging the door open as best as he could with his foot, 
wincing at the creaking hinges, he hauled Skywarp inside and set him down on the concrete floor. His self-repair looked to have taken care of the leakage, but that tear in the metal was still worrying. Who knew what circuitry beneath it could have been damaged? He wasn't a medic or a technician. There wasn't a thing he could do about the wound. He couldn't contact the Decepticons. He had no idea where they were. And they fragging well couldn't remain here for too long before one of those humans he'd passed got it into their heads to contact the Autobots. They needed help, and they needed it fast. Go out and find a landmark, he finally decided. A city, a monument, something to pinpoint your location. At least then you'll have some idea of where to go from here. Finding an old canvas tarp among the odds and ends that had been left in the barn, he covered Skywarp up as best as he could, just in case a human did decide to go nosing around in there. Then he left and proceeded down the road, again not wanting to risk flight and attract undue attention. He didn't get too far before yet another vehicle, a rusty green pickup truck, roared into view, but this one pulled over to the side of the road rather than shooting on past. The driver, an older human male with gray bristles on his face and a grease-stained cap, rolled down the window and addressed Thundercracker. You on your way to that convention in town? Excuse me, repeated Thundercracker. That convention ain't Halloween for three more months, so you gotta be here for the convention. Town ain't been the same since those dang Trekkies took it over. Uh, a convention? Something like Comic Con or Dragon Con, then. Skywarp had downloaded pictures of both events and laughed hysterically over how willing humans were to make utter fools of themselves in public like that. Thundercracker had just made a note to avoid such locales, too weird for his tastes. But here he was, being mistaken for one of those bizarre humans who frequented such events. Did he really look that much like a fleshling in a costume? You lost, kid? the man asked, sounding a bit impatient. No, no, he replied, finally deciding that being mistaken for a human was unappealing, but at least better than being recognized as a Decepticon. Just walking to the convention is all. Long way to walk. You'll be walking all day just to get to town. My, uh, car broke down, he lied. The man considered, then jerked a thumb over his shoulder, no doubt indicating the bed of the pickup. Hop in. I'm on my way into town. I can drop you off somewhere, and you can call for a tow truck. Be faster for you. Um, thanks, he replied, and pulled himself into the back of the truck. Charity offered by a human was something new, but then he supposed it wasn't odd for a human to help another human. This one just didn't realize he was offering to help a Decepticon. Once the vehicle was back on the road and continuing on its way, presumably toward town, the driver flipped open the window that separated him from Thundercracker to continue the conversation. What are you supposed to be dressed as, anyhow? Uh, Slaggett, he could have used Skywarp's imagination right now. Uh, Decepticon? Decepta what? Thundercracker stared at the back of the man's head. You've never heard of them? Not off the top of my head, but it rings a bell. Wait, you're a transformer, right? That's what some people call them. At least that was the truth. Oh yeah, the man replied with a chuckle. Remember them? My kids watched that show when they were young. Bought all the toys, too, but kept on breaking them. Finally, I had to put my foot down and say, You want them so bad? Buy them yourself. He chuckled. Bet they wish they'd kept some of them in one piece now. I hear they fetch a nice price on eBay. Thundercracker just stared. What was he talking about? Town turned out to be more of a small city than a town, but perhaps the human who'd offered him a lift didn't necessarily make a distinction. As he jumped down from the truck bed and onto the sidewalk, he noted that despite there being a miniaturized seeker on their streets, the humans didn't seem at all frightened of him. Oh, some of them looked at him strangely, and more than a few young children pointed or made odd exclamations, but there was none of the panic or antagonism that was typical of humans who had just spotted a Decepticon intruder. And now I have to stop. Pause for station identification.